Welcome to the Henning Mobile Weight Watcher Rope Load Measurement System Video Quick Reference Guide, brought to you by Wartech, Henning's North American distributor. Your results will be accurate and reliable when you understand the capabilities of the Henning Mobile Weight Watcher Rope Load Measurement System and follow the proper procedures for use. Let's get started. Prepare the system for use by gathering the components, checking the batteries, and programming the settings to match the elevator you will be adjusting. Insert the batteries into the handheld measuring unit, taking care not to reverse the polarity of the battery as this may cause damage to the unit. A set of batteries for this system lasts for about 4 hours of use. It's a good idea to use rechargeable batteries and always keep a spare set of 4. To power on the device, hold the on-off button for 3 or more seconds. At the main display screen, Use the config button to choose the appropriate settings for rope loads and system measurements. You will set the appropriate settings for sensor type, suspension ratio of your system, unit of measurement, and individual weight display. Use the correct rope sensor size according to the measurement and load range capability of the sensors, the diameter of your ropes, and most importantly, the possible maximum load expected on any one rope in your system. When using the LSM XL sensor in North America, where measurements are made in pounds, the correct unit of measurement setting is ST, which stands for short tons. Converting short tons to pounds is easy. One short ton equals 2,000 pounds. Tolerance level is estimated by the user. Choosing a narrow tolerance will require you to spend more time achieving equalization. Henning recommends setting tolerance at 5% for 1 to 1 systems and 10% for 2 to 1 systems. For more information about setting tolerance, see the Weight Watcher Quick Reference Guide that came with your mobile Weight Watcher toolset or view the PDF at www.wartech.com. When connecting the sensor to the MSM unit, Make sure that the USB cords are attached and free of visible damage. The most important part of the measurement process is the attachment and setting of the rope sensors. The ideal goal is to achieve a setting on but not covering the green line in the middle with no visible black area between the green line and the adjustment knob. Fit the sensor over the rope and adjust to the rope size with the clamp open. Always adjust with the clamp in the open position and do not adjust while it is closed. Dial the knob to the appropriate size on the sensor scale. Close the sensor clamp into place and check your settings. If your settings do not land on the green line, reopen the sensor clamp and make small adjustments as needed. Again, do not adjust the knob with the sensor clamp in the closed position. If the clamp does not close relatively easily, something is wrong. Do not force the clamp to close. Set the sensors at least 8 inches from the rope hitch point away from the shackles. Be sure that the sensors are not attached in a section of rope that has any curvature associated with the shackle. Any curvature in the rope can affect measurements. This includes curvature caused by setting the sensor. If a sensor is released for any reason, it must be reset in a different position, 8 to 10 feet from the previous position. Alternatively, you may run the car a bit and allow the ropes to rest for 10 minutes to allow the residual tension to dissipate. For a 2 to 1 roped elevator, after adjustments, run the car up and down to verify load distribution. The goal is to equalize the longest possible sections of rope. This placement of the sensor is suitable for the measurement of the weight of the car, or the counterweight. However, this placement would not be appropriate for equalization as there is a risk of damaging the sensors by running the car shivs over the sensors. Sensor placement for equalization should be at or near the top with the longest possible length of rope below the sensor. For more information about setting sensors and troubleshooting circumstances that may lead to false measurement, refer to Step 4 in the Mobile Weight Watcher Quick Reference Guide PDF. There could also be some weight impact related to built-up tension in guide shoes on rails. This is covered in the troubleshooting section of the guide. When weighing cars or counterweights, you'll want to take into account compensation cables or other comp-related equipment affecting your weight. Subtract a best estimate of such weights to ensure you are only considering the weight of the car or counterweight. For further information, refer to the Mobile Weight Watcher user manual at www.wartech.com. Pay attention to the measured weight displayed for each individual sensor. Be sure that the measurement is not greater than the maximum measurable load for the sensor. For example, 
LSM-1 sensors have a maximum measurable load of 1,100 pounds. If the individual sensor weight nears or exceeds 1,100 pounds, the total measured weight of the car will not be accurate. This is particularly possible if, for example, you are working with an older system where the grooves in the drive shiv might have worn unequally and rope loads are not equalized. Again. When rope loads are not equalized, the load on a single rope may exceed the 1,100 pound limit for LSM-1. If this occurs, the rope load should be equalized prior to the measurement of car weight. In situations where rope loads cannot be equalized, to obtain accurate results with Mobile Weight Watcher, use the LSM-XL sensor. Congratulations, you are now ready to use the Henning Mobile Weight Watcher Rope Load Measurement System. Following these steps and considerations will ensure that your Mobile Weight Watcher Rope Load Measurement System provides accurate and reliable measurements. Equalization will extend the life of your ropes and shivs. Equalized ropes will also achieve a smoother ride in your elevator. For more information, contact your Wertec sales representative.